So uh, one of the things that we've been talking about is how when you're on a high, never stand there and admire your high for too long. No. Because around the corner, there's a massive drop. Yes. Yeah. High you go, the bigger it is to the bottom. Yeah. And yet, you should always seek to reach higher goals. But when you get there, you are grateful that you managed to get there. And then you go back down on your high horse and you just are grounded with being average not in like what you're offering but just nothing ever gets too good or too shit it's just a nice balance yeah yeah i think we can all be humbled very quickly i think the important thing to remember is no feeling or emotion is going to last forever yeah. and that's happiness or sadness you know but why is sex so good for the soul because when you connect to a human being that deeply we're going back to basics how we were born that's how we became ourselves we are made up of that energy from our parents or well, the breath work and mushrooms taught me go home when you seek out go home you can seek out but before you seek out and go get go home ask yourself why do i really 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 want this can i live without it the answer is yes you can fucking get it get into the robe <laughs>
compound and you will become more level headed in making decisions. You will not be carried away with silly decisions. And, and, and once you harness that, I then think you're untouchable. Nothing can can make me that upset. Yes, there are there are tragedies that, that are gonna that are gonna happen in your life that are gonna make you upset. Life happens. But it's all about how you deal with them. And that starts as of now. If, you, if, a, if you're watching this podcast and you receive a little bit of good news or receive a little bit of bad news, or you get a bill that was unexpected through the letterbox, or you get a phone call for a job that you didn't think you got and you suddenly got. Bear in mind what I'm saying now. How are you controlling that emotion? How are you how are you dealing with that emotion? How are you understanding that this emotion is only going to feel temporary? Because that is half the battle. It's just getting started with it. It's just recognizing, recognizing, okay, it's not great, but it's not going to last forever. Yeah, and it goes back to one day it's sunny and then it's raining. Of course. And day it also goes back to day and night. Day and night, day and and night. it's daylight and it's night time. Sometimes daylight lasts for longer because of the season. Sometimes daylight lasts for less time because of the season. But that doesn't control your emotion. That's happening regardless of whether you like it or not. Just like good news and bad news is going to happen whether you like it or not. Yeah, our job is to balance out the highs and the lows, not stew or sit too much in the highs and sit and yeah. stew in the lows. It's this combination. One day it could be up, one next day it could be down. It's like Bringing a brolly and also bringing your shorts. You're allowed to cry, you know, like, and I've done a lot of crying over the past six weeks that, again, I probably hadn't cried for, I'm not proud of this. I think crying is a good emotion, but, you know, I probably didn't cry for six years, really, like, like as much as I have cried over the past six weeks. And that's okay. You know, it's okay to feel upset. It's okay to cry. I'm not saying to you guys, you know, if you receive some bad news, you know, oh, just just deal with it. You know, it's gonna, but but recognize what's going on. Recognize this isn't forever. Recognize that you're currently in a bad energy state. That you're low. That you're not feeling great. But the, this isn't gonna last forever. This isn't gonna last even for as long as you think it's gonna last for. Um, and that's the same with good news as well. You know, oh, this is so brilliant. Oh my god, I've just you know I've just won fifty thousand pounds. This is amazing. I'm I'm so happy. Yeah, that's fine. And enjoy the moment, but. You Your know, roof's gonna go and get a hole in well, for twenty grand's well, worth. Well, well, you're gonna you're you're gonna firstly become more wanting of things with fifty thousand pounds in your bank. You're gonna you're things are gonna you're gonna buy more. That's just how it is. You're not gonna put that fifty pounds in the bank and forget about it. You're naturally gonna be more open to buying stuff. So the money's gonna go, and also you are going to come down from that high because you're gonna realize that fifty thousand pounds is there. I've I've won it as an example and that emotion will, will we won't be that excited all the time because excitement comes it goes S disappointment comes it goes and i just think it's it's about recognizing that and certainly for me i have become much more resilient and uh much more what's the word i'm looking for i've become much more one one you know, if you're looking what balance. Bog, a balance, like good news, brilliant. I'm so happy with that. Of course, I'm happy with it. Bad news. OK, that's OK. How do we work on this? How do we get that better? Non-reactive. Non-reactive. Like, you know, going back to what's happened Stable. to me recently, family in crisis. Da, 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 da. OK, what, we, what, what can we do? What's the worst that can happen? And let's work backwards from yeah. there. And, you know, but the old me would be like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. This is awful. My life's over as well. This is da, 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 da. So. So I did a breath work ceremony. And um, basically, you just lay on the floor for like an hour and you're breathing through your mouth and you're using your stomach to push out rather than your lungs. So you've been like. <sighs> and out of nowhere, I started to burst out crying. What? Proper like. <laughs> uh, biggest. It's what, that's what you did the other day when Nando's had sold out of the chicken that <clears throat> exactly, you like to right? eat. But no, it was like proper baby beltering right and then she came over and put her hand on my chest and it just all came out and what i realized is i thought i've done all my work and maybe i have but the emotion and the energy was still in what me. happened what happened yeah, what, what, what what is that what so you you basically breathe in a way where you're just i don't know the t science of it but you're breathing and then you're just letting all this emotion come out and then you get to a certain state 
and you just belt her crying. And there's a full grown man there. He's crying as well. There's other women. Would, would I cry? Probably, yeah. So, <laughs> but what's it doing? I don't get it. It's releasing the energy stored in you. Like okay. trauma, you've got like a, a situation that you remember. Okay. But that feeling is stored in you. So you can go over like being bullied at school and being like, yeah, I forgive you. But that energy, that feeling is still oh. stored in you. Hence why you might feel anxious or nervous or you might get triggered when you see that person, but you've already forgiven them. It's the energy. So by getting you into that state, you cry and you let it out. And there's this thing called tenacity, where if you have too much carbon dioxide out of your body, you can't move your hands. Right. You like seize up. And I, I was lying on the floor like this and I couldn't move my hands for like 20 minutes. Right. It's what happens when your muscles don't have carbon dioxide. It's something like you need the carbon dioxide to make your muscles flow. But anyway, I was like this for ages. I couldn't move and I was belting like a baby. And it was so powerful because you just let go of all this weight that you didn't even know you had. I didn't know I had any more weight and I thought I'd gone on my crying like you. Last time I cried properly was when I was 20 months after my awakening. And then all of a sudden, all this came out. I was the one that was crying the most there. And it was proper, proper crying. Interesting. Couldn't believe it. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. It's interesting what... I mean, my, my I'm always interested in my uh, in, in how much we do have stored in our body that we don't even realise that we've got stored. And what I mean by that is, like, my friend did a uh, Reiki, is it Reiki? Yeah, I did that as well. And they got burnt by something on their leg, like yeah. a, a hot thing burnt their leg, and then they vomited. Then yeah. they, then they, they, and and the, the vomit that they vomited was like a, a weird colour. So like they're letting out something exactly. that's in you. What What is that? I don't even... Well, there is a thing that um, you burn your body and then you put a frog, something to do with the frog or the cactus plant, and then it goes into your body has an effect like taking mushrooms i haven't heard of the reiki thing where he's puking but what is ayahuasca uh it's i think it's a it's a plant it's, and what does it it's do a plant you? root or something it makes your body have a certain effect where it affects the penile gland and makes you have this awakening rewires your brain i don't know the exact things i haven't done it yet i'm yet to do it but would you do it absolutely really yeah and you're not worried that it would completely change you forever? No, I did mushrooms for the first time the other day. That already changed my life. That, In a good way? 100%. In what way? That the things that I just put up with, I realised no longer. There is... All from a mushroom? All from a mushroom. I realised that I compared what I was accepting, call it people that I'm dating, or just situations that I'm just accepting because that's what I've always known. That's the pattern. That when I took the mushrooms, I thought, holy shit, how I feel just right now on these mushrooms, looking at someone in their eye, sitting still as a feeling, comparing it to all these other stuff, go-karting, food, shagging, bungee jumping, whatever. It doesn't compare. And I've got this just by eating a part of nature. Now, obviously, we're going to still do all these things in life because why not? We've got the opportunity to do all this shit. And of course, I'm going to do it. But it allowed me to know that there's feelings out there that I didn't know I could feel, which put these into perspective as a yeah. little shit. And all it really means is that whatever you think is good, there is something better. Never settle, but always be grateful for what you have. Be grateful, but just know there's something better. And it's okay to want more. But it was mainly the feeling I felt just as a feeling versus what I thought was a high I thought shagging was a high. Okay, I thought... stop talking about shagging. Okay. Well, I thought it was a high, and then I took mushrooms, and I realised that's a high. Right. And a shagging. Did your away. dad know that you <clears throat> did mushrooms? Probably not. Or are you going to go and tell him? No, I, I'll put some in his, in, in his back bowl next week. Now, your dad is a very straight-laced man. That is correct. If he was to do mushrooms, what would happen? He would probably realise that um, life is... Uh, Sure. And... What would what would if I did mushrooms? Josh, I think you should do mushrooms. No. They grow in a field. No, because guys, if you're watching, I am the most lightweight. Yeah, but Josh, it's not what you think. Guy. It's not what in the co-kids, it's not what we does. 
you just have like this clarity. It's just the clarity. Like, what if I don't get the clarity and it, is, it has a bad effect on me? It won't have a bad effect. Like, as long as you're, as long as you're not going through shit or you're running from stuff. If you're just in a field, the trees will just look really green, and you'll just feel connected to them, and it just enhances the feeling. What if I am running from something? Then it will make you face it even harder. I did mushrooms, and I did also cry. You I did took, cry. I did cry. That's the first time I cried. What were you crying about? Um, I was crying about how I wanted a connection with somebody to complete me and make me feel whole and that actually I need and have that myself. Got you. And it was just awakening of wanting this completion but actually I don't need that completion because I have it by myself and the mushroom symbolized I can create feelings with nothing. So if I can create this with nothing I can be happy with nothing. And it's about coming home first before you seek external pleasures. You can still seek external pleasures. I will be a billionaire, but you need to come home first and be happy with just wearing a robe all day. And then you can start buying Gucci. Right, got you. But the mushroom just brought emotions to the surface of deeper stored energy. It's, it's incredible. The breath work, the mushrooms made me cry. And I've not cried like that. And we're talking like... <laughs> Where, was the bre- Where was the breath work? David Lloyd. Uh, no, it was in London that this um this place, this person does breath work events. What place? I don't know, just a place in London. Um, I can't even remember what it was. But all lying on the floor. They've did got... you pay? Yeah. Um, so this guy, he's got... How much did you pay? 30 quid or something. 30 quid and to it's make two you hours. cry. No, but it's about letting go of like healing and trauma. So this guy would have his little DJ set and he'll be like making sounds and looping them over, right? To what he's feeling in the room. So he's going like, and then he loops it. And then you're going in this trance. She's going, okay, and breathe in, out. And you're going, and then she goes, hold. And at this point, you're tingling. Your whole body's tingling because it's flooded with oxygen. At this point, I'm like a fucking dinosaur, right? I can't move. I literally can't move. Like, imagine like when um people are hit by like um acid attacks. Like, say Iran bombed a place and it's got why can you acid. not move? Because when you release so much ox, so much carbon dioxide, your muscles need that to to flow or something. Right. So when you haven't got enough, you just tense up. And I've done it before, so I knew what was coming. It's called tet tetany, right? It's a real thing, tetany, and um. Yeah, and uh, it was like uh, it was a magical experience. And for the last and uh, for five hours, six hours, five after, hours, as in the whole thing was for two hours, but I was in this zone for like six, seven, eight hours afterwards of just like that was mental. And so the mushrooms and the breath work were done at different parts. Yeah, different parts, and they both did different things. The mushrooms made me realize that I can feel something that I didn't know even existed on this planet. What I thought was. Imagine fucking and you're about to come and you're on like level nine. I'm going to come, I'm going to come, I'm going to come for like two or three hours. Going Finger back, up your ass, right? back to six again. Yeah. That high of, oh my God, this feels so good. This feels so good. Mushrooms, it was like times 10. That's how it, that's how it felt. And afterwards I went for lunch and I remember just thinking, people don't even know what we've just felt. They live After in their, the mushrooms? Yeah, they live in their lives, chasing an Xbox, Xbox new bag. A new house, new wallpaper, they want a new TV, new husband, whatever. But you've not had the high of having a new TV, clearly. I, I have. <clears throat> that is a high. And then I was having lunch and I was thinking, wow, I feel so good. And yet people don't even know what happiness can be. And yet it's within. All happiness comes from within. And like what the it. mushrooms did is tell me that happiness comes from within. It's good. There's a reason why people take mushrooms and it isn't because they don't work. I've just obviously heard about very bad trips on mushrooms from people that go to like, like, yeah, like people go to Amsterdam on stag do's and they hide in their room from the snakes that are crawling around on the floor. And I mean, there's levels. The pink elephants. Yeah. Like if you take loads and loads and loads and loads and loads, that's probably not good. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, sure. But I'd if imagine you... if you're on a stag do in Amsterdam, you're not uh, taking them for the medicinal purposes no. to find yourself. You're supposed to be in nature. Yeah, you're no. supposed to be in a safe room with safe people, like a spiritual event. 
maybe at a festival with love and people and dance and it enhances what you're already feeling. People are going to stag do. Yeah. Obviously, that is the wrong place. Oi, but... Dave! <laughs> Oi, Dave! As you're chasing around the midget that you've booked and your mate who's dressed as a woman with learner plates around his neck. Exactly. Where's the rest of the mushrooms? He's got this concoction in his hand of not just mushrooms, but weed pills and he hasn't realized he's taken and they're mixing it all together five pills that he thought was mushrooms because he's hallucinating um but no if you're gonna do it you want to be in the right head i don't believe in drugs if you're watching this well, i wouldn't take any yeah, but josh it grows in the field but it doesn't matter it's still illegal if you got caught selling mushrooms you would be prosecuted with selling a class yeah but if you drug. eat a mushroom same like with weed though really like weed is a plant yeah but you know what and mushrooms that's illegal are banned. Why? Because it wakes people up and they see that we're living in a matrix. Okay. Okay. 50, 60 years ago, don't quote me, in America, Kennedy or someone wanted to legalise it or not legalise yeah, it. Yeah, no, I've heard about this. No, he wanted to legalise it. And uh, it was shut down because people would see how they're being controlled. So yet we can give out powerful medicine and people can smoke and kids can smoke and, and do vapes. But yet we can't eat a natural mushroom, which is how we evolved as human in the first place, whilst every other mushroom is being sold on the planet, apart from this magic mushroom, which makes us see... So what is the magic mushroom? Is There's it... more than one, isn't there? It's not just one mushroom. There's, there's different strands. Yeah, I'm sure there's different mushrooms that have different side effects. Yeah. So it's called sciacibling or something. Right. Sciacibling is the hallucinogenic chemical that you feel. I'm sure that is in lots of different mushrooms. But the magic ones are the ones that are the ones that are grown in the field, the ones that you can grow yourself. Literally, they're just tiny, tiny mushrooms, and they dry up, and you just nibble on it. Literally, you put it in your mouth, you chew, it's almost gone. You just have like five, ten, fifteen, twenty of them, and then the trip only lasted for like three hours, four hours. And what I say, what were I'm... you worried at any point that the trip was going to last forever? No, no, no. When I say trip, it, I, I can't. It's not it's what you think. A trip meaning I just felt this amazing feeling of like love and happiness and this wholeness and vibration it was almost like i've just okay this is how i'd explain it i've just won the olympics and i've got this charge of energy and happiness through me and i'm celebrating afterwards in the locker room saying thanks mate well done well done slapping the ass of everyone yeah, slapping the ass i feel so good yeah that's how it feels like i'm not seeing mickey mouse jumping out of walls and the trees having faces on it and Satan coming through someone's tits. Yeah. No, that's what I thought hallucination was. It is not. 100% not. Let's talk about the future for you. Future for me is to make a billion pounds and then I will put it in a bank account with a set amount of interest. I will live off the interest and then that will fund me traveling the world with my production company, which will film me going to different parts of the world, such as Africa, building mud huts, um ukraine where there's people that haven't got houses you would go food. to ukraine maybe not ukraine <laughs> um, homeless in america i put them all up in a travel lodge get them just for nice... one night no for a month got to sort them out properly it wasn't this no a month what if after a month they still need help well like, they've got a month <laughs> they've got a month <laughs> shave their hair wash themselves try and get them a job you know get them like set up right real philanthropy stuff talk to me about um the country that you want to visit the most um by land by land bali and thailand bali and thailand bali thailand vietnam not vietnam yeah vietnam um all the places where what's the country that you've got the least desire to visit afghanistan okay for no reason why somewhere that isn't a war zone somewhere that isn't a war zone yeah um what so you would never do mushrooms <laughs> No, I'm asking you a question about countries, though. What's the country that you least are attracted to visit? But don't give me, like, a one that's... That, that you, not, obviously, you don't want to go to Afghanistan. Well, no, I do actually want to travel to every country in the world. Yeah. Obviously, not ones that I might get raped and, yeah, like, eaten be, and be sold. careful, yeah. Um, I don't really have a place that I wouldn't go, really, because I want to die and say I've done all of it. I've been to every country, fucked every species of tree, um, eaten every type of food. Um, Should we talk about your love interest at the moment? No. <laughs> Not, not not podcast relevant people want to be enlightened by spiritual growth not shagging and butt plugs why is sex so good for the soul because when you connect to a human being that deeply you're going back to basics it's how we were born that's 
how we became ourselves. We are made up of that energy from our parents that were once that close. It's doing a full circle coming home. When we shag, we go back to the feeling our parents felt before we were born. That climax, that high of, I'm going to come. That's when Josh almost came into existence. Well, that's when Josh was born into existence at that very moment. One streak of jizz. But it's that wholeness. You're going back home. Hence what the crying did. Or the, the breath work of mushrooms taught me. Go home. When you seek out, go home. You can seek out. But before you seek out and go get, go home. Ask yourself, why do I really, really, really want this? Can I live without it? The answer is yes. Yeah. Fucking get it. Get into the robe. Get into the robe. Um, what's uh, on your mind for future plans, Josh? Future plans for me are to build my football academies that I'm currently building and they're growing uh, to keep consistent. As I've spoken about on many of these podcasts, consistency for me is everything. So I do the same things every single day. Keep going with that. Um, to travel a little bit more with work, I find that traveling opens my mind up. But my traveling is slightly different to yours. I want to travel and see how people are football coaching around the world, different cultures. They do it differently in Japan. The coaching styles in America are different to here. The, the coaching styles in Africa are different over here. And I just, I'm so intrigued by football fitness and fitness and just general exercise that I want to see how other people do it. I can see you teaching in Africa, in well, the would, desert, well, right, with like a football that's I always say, a... with, with no responsibility to my family, and with no responsibility to anyone over here, which unfortunately is not the case. I have a lot of responsibility over here and I've got a lot of responsibility with my family. Yeah. I would just go away for a year and just travel the world cut out of a suitcase, coaching, take some footballs, take some cones and just go to these countries, show them what I can do with the coaching and see what they can do, you know, see, see, see their coaching styles as well. Why should people travel if they can before they get too old? What's the benefits? Um, the world is a big place. Uh, why not? Give me, give me a reason why you shouldn't go and see the world. Again, it puts into perspective what you thought was there that isn't and that there's more than what you thought. I, I just think the world is a very big place, very big place. And as humans, we are creatures of habit. And I think when you don't move your body and you don't travel and you don't see new things, you become very, 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 very boring as a person because you're seeing the same things the conversations that you're having are going to be around the same topics but the world is so big you are really just a tiny 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 grain of sand amongst a beach that spans for miles and miles and miles and you know the hunger to want to go and explore in me isn't massive i don't want to visit every country that's not in me but i definitely want to get around the world and see some different cultures you know i definitely want to go and see what, how they live in Africa. I definitely want to go. I've never been to America. Like, you've never been. No, have you? Yeah. Where? What part have you been to? Route sixty six. When? Vegas, L A, San Fran. Who with? <clears throat> My uncle when I was eighteen. Was it good? Incredible. I thought I was fucking L A. I came back with pink women's chinos, a bright p blue woman's jacket. A, uh, a Where's this was Wally before your awakening. Yeah, a Where's Wally t shirt. Tell me about your awakening. Bright pink shoes, and I went to the airport. Right. I, I basically, in L.A., it was like the L.A. vibe. Right. I came back at the airport. My parents picked me up and my sister. First thing they went was, oh, my God, get that off. What are you wearing? And I felt like my happiness was just. Yeah, of shat course. On, of right course, there. Of course. Because your free. identity was gone. Yeah. I was free being different. And L.A., oh, my God, do you love your fucking pink pants, man? And I come back and it's back to the, the real world of. What are you doing? Like, can't you be normal? Yeah, yeah. Get a normal yeah. job, wear normal clothes. Yeah. And I was Go and be an estate agent, Oliver. And I was distraught. Yeah, of course, because your dreams were crushed. Can we uh, talk about your awakening, please? Yes, Josh, what would you like to know? Were you coming back from LA? Were you happy? No. Why? Because I'd found freedom, which is just basically doing whatever you want when you want. And then coming back to this normal life of, I've still got to try and get a job, right? People want me to be normal. Normal girlfriend, get move out, all the normal bullshit. And I'm like, just, I'm wearing fucking pink chinos and a blue jacket. And um, I feel great. And yeah, it's not 
people's expectations of me, yeah. and somehow it's their 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 problem, and it's their own bullshit and insecurities. Yeah, of course. Well, why 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 are you dressing? Why are you dressing how you want to dress? Why is that a problem for them? Exactly, that's the whole point. It's that if somebody's happy doing what they're doing, you know, if, if a man wants to wear a dress, he can wear a dress. Of course. If he can handle the bullshit and the looks that come from wearing a dress, then well done. Good, yeah, good on wear you. Wear the dress. It's not about whether you think you're a woman or not. It's if you want to wear a dress, fucking do it. If you truly, truly, Sorry, truly, truly own what you do, people won't find a vulnerability in you to well, take well, you down. It's not, but it's not their place to try and find a vulnerability in you. Would you ever wear a dress, Josh? No, but that's my decision. Do I have a problem with other people wearing dresses? No, because it's not my life. I think if you are unhappy or you take offence to how other people dress, then you need to take a look at yourself. Would you wear it's women's, got nothing to do with you. Would you wear a woman's swimming, swimming costume? No, but that's me. You're missing my point. I wouldn't, no. But do I have a problem with you doing it? Absolutely not. Because it's your life. It's not my life. This isn't. These aren't my decisions to make. I think people that take an interest in other people's lives need to really take a long, hard look at their own life, obviously. Why is what I do relevant to you? And that's even when you're in the same industry as someone. Like, I'm a football coach. Do I really care what other coaches are doing? No. Did I? Used to. Yeah, absolutely. But it took me time to figure out that, again, we go back to what we were speaking about of emotions that are just dead and worthless like the, the emotion of jealousy and envy and and judgment are such wasted emotions and when you learn to recognize what a wasted emotion is and how it does take you down a dead end you stop doing it but there is obviously benefits by looking at other people in your industry and getting inspired by them of course just but that's a thing but them. you're 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 looking at it then from a different lens you're not looking at it through the lens of, oh, God, I should be doing that. And, oh, what? You're looking at it through the lens of, thank you for posting this or thank you for showing me this. What can I learn from it? And even if I'm being honest, what can I steal? What can I take from it to make my business better? Can I look at the videos of other coaches and then make my business better? At it? Because I care about my business more than I care about their business. And that's really what makes the world go round, doesn't it? Can I take a bit of what you're doing and bring it into my life? And that's why I post so much on Instagram and TikTok. Can you take what I'm doing and put it into your life? Will it will it make your life better? Yeah, like one of the main thing is is staying in your lane. So you can you can look at other people's lanes, but stay in your lane. Don't let what someone else is doing of course subside you from what you're doing. Because all the energy that you're putting into what he's doing could be going into what you're doing. Of course. Every time you are not filling up your own cup, you're filling up someone else's cup. Of course. And that means you've got to fill up your cup more the next day. Look, you are a very sad person if you allow yourself to be dictated by what other people think of you. Right? And, you know, you're always, if you're watching this and you do stuff and you do a business or you, you're online and like, I've got some news for you and you probably don't need to hear it from me because you've heard it before, but you are never, ever, 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 ever going to be liked or accepted by everyone. That's a fact. That's not, a, that's not an opinion. That's a fact. Nobody on this planet is liked and accepted by everyone. Fact. So stop seeking that, that acceptance from everyone. Seek acceptance from people who you resonate with and who you want acceptance from and who you feel can benefit you and fill you up and make you a better person. They want, because you want to make them your audience. You want to make them your crowd. You want to make them your friends. You want to make them your people. But don't seek the approval of people that you're never going to win over because you're fighting a, a, a complete pointless battle. Or more importantly, seek the approval of yourself. Yeah. Am I happy with me and what I'm doing and my actions and my performance? Am I performing up to my standards that i think i am yeah worthy of if not why hold yourself accountable make sure you are the boss and are you serving the boss are you serving yourself in the best way that you can could you be doing better if you're not why are you not doing better most of the time it's because you're too busy focusing on other shit or you're not putting in the amount of effort that you could be 
And there's only one thing to do at that point. Tell them to fuck themselves. Tell them to fuck themselves with a dildo up their rectum and shag a reindeer. <laughs> Sorry, we diverted there. Okay, Oliver, one final question for you. Yes. And you get a final question okay. for me. How about that? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> when you wake up in the morning and you open your eyes, what are the first thoughts that start to come into your mind? I must have a quick wank before I have a wee. No. Um, first thoughts is... You like egg fried rice? <laughs> My first thoughts is, um, I need to undo my blind, turn on the TV, continue what I was watching the night before, and then go to my computer, turn on the computer, check crypto, check my work emails. No, that's, then... you've missed my point. What's right. the first thought that comes into your mind? Okay, so normally, if I need a wee it, I knew I should have had my a third wee before bed. <laughs> So I we at eight o'clock, an hour before and what five minutes. What time did you get period. up? Um, quarter to six this morning. You were out of bed at quarter to six. Yeah. Okay. So I'm now going to bed at quarter past ten. I wake up naturally. Been waking up naturally pretty much every day. Quarter to six is my new wake up time. I'm trying to get longer in bed, but for some reason my body doesn't need longer. Um, but yeah, that's what happens. Is I think. Oh, fuck! I knew I should have had a wee before bed because now I've got a fucking boner and I can't wee right now. I've got to wait till it goes down. So I have to sit, sit on the couch and sort of just hold my breath until it goes down. Then I can go. If I wee four hours and an hour and five minutes before bed, no problem. Straight on that toilet seat. So what happens is, is that the bladder puts pressure on the prostate, which makes you have an erection. Okay. Question for me. Um, what's the benefits of not ejaculating for a month energetically? Yeah, opinion based or fact based? Because uh, I don't know the facts on that. Um, either but or. I can tell you some opinions on it. Yes. I think it, 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 it creates a discipline within you that is uh, healthy. I think it is going to make you... Are we talking ejaculate with a partner or with wanking? With your hand. Yeah, okay. So if we're talking about that, I think it's naturally going to make you want to seek a partner more. So me being single... I'm not going to go into my habits on this podcast. However, I will tell you from experience that when I do go through phases of not doing what you said, wanking, I find myself much more productive because my mind is not being swayed to the fact that I could go and do this and get an immediate pleasure from it and at the fingertips of my hand, watch and see whatever I wanted. When you, that that's taken away from you, did you seek women more when you don't? Yes, when you don't. Yes, because what no, but what you're seeking is something different. You're seeking something more pure. You're not seeking. You're seeking genuine connection with someone to obviously ejaculate, but more than that as well. Um, energy levels are definitely lifted, and and you have this. This natural energy in you that is 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 a for, it's also it's a formed discipline as well because like mm. I said it's the discipline of not doing what ninety nine point nine percent of people are doing yes. it's it's the discipline of I am different I am a little bit different I'm not falling at the first hurdle for that yes. for that thing and I I want to get to a point in my life. And I want to get to this point. Or I can have a posh rank every month. No, where mm. I. I mean, this is a crazy place to get to. But if I can get to this point, then I will be. This is where this is this is the the, the epitome of happiness, right? In my opinion, being with a someone it can be male or female. With with me, it would be female because I'm straight. But it could be male or female, whatever your sexual preference is. And you're at a point where that person gives you everything you want. You don't need to wank. Yes. But, uh, but I'm not talking about for the first year. I'm not talking about for the first two years. I'm talking about a connection that they give you everything you could ever want. A wholeness connection. But but yeah, but also on the sexual front as well, where they are... Because the only reason why, you, you, if you're watching this, why you are wanking... <laughs> they watch this whilst they're wanking. And you have a partner. The only reason why you're doing that is because 
in my opinion, and again, this isn't fact, but this is where I sit on it, because from previous relationships I've had, that partner is not giving you everything that you want. And and that's okay. absolutely fine, by the way, because I've been in a position where I was probably afraid to ask my partner for everything that I would want. Because she may well laugh at me. She may be like, fuck you. Like, I'm not I'm not giving you that. You've got to be crazy. And that's that's real. That that can happen. That that is that is that is a problem with a lot of relationships, which unfortunately will lead to a little bit of a dead end because there's only it will either lead to you your sex life drying up or it will lead to you looking for sex elsewhere or it will lead to you masturbating so much that you don't want to have sex with your partner like but 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 you learn by doing right and there's fixes to this if you're watching this thing oh my god that's me she then you can you can have the conversation like but my idea of the perfect sexual partner of course is that one where it's it's the reason why it stays so erotic and fresh is because it's always changing i feel like doing this this week i feel like bringing this person in this week i feel like doing this with you this week can we try that and and believe me that with that communication like you're onto a winner yes like you are onto an absolute winner you will never why would you have to wank when you're getting it like that but again it's like to find that person yes is difficult and it's also yes needs to be something that is created from an early point in the relationship. It yeah. can't be, I'm okay with this once a week, a little bit of sex here and there, and I'm okay with you not doing certain things to me, which I actually crave as a human, but I'm not getting from you. We'll forget that. And then three years, four years down the line, be like, actually, like, can we start doing that? Because it's, it's gone then. The, the, the thing's gone. But, you know, lessons learned from previous relationships from myself and not just one, I've had several, and they're all the same, sort of, like, you're not asking for what you really desire, you're settling, and there's no need to cheat, there's no need to have wandering eyes, if the woman you're with, or the man you're with, is is giving you everything that you want, and I'm quite passionate about talking about this, because I'm seeking that person one day, maybe not right now, but I am seeking that person one day, because I don't want to look elsewhere. I want to give everything I've got to that one person. Like I want that one person in my life. Um, because cheating what is isn't wrong. It's wrong. Why do you need to cheat? You know, even, even if you look at the Bible and, and any form, having a sexual partner isn't bad. It's not bad. The, the sex isn't bad. But sometimes the way we 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 go about it is bad. Are we seeking girls when they're drunk? Are we seeking guys when they're rich? Are we seeking uh, love when we're weak? Are we seeking love as revenge to an ex-partner? Are we? Are we tra- that's that's when it gets a little bit. But the act of having sex with someone is like Ollie said earlier. Like that's how we were born. That's why we are on this planet. For at some point, someone's had sex to create you and. And yeah, I think as I get older, so your question was no ejaculation. Yes, wanking. But then we're talking about now ejaculation with a partner. We we're onto a whole different subject. Okay, right. Uh, I was going to extend, but we can wait for next time. Uh, anything you want to promote before we end? Willies. Okay. <laughs> and if there was, uh, if you had one day left on the planet to live, one day left the, on the planet. What is the one thing that you would say to the world? If one day left to live. Uh, one day left on the planet. One thing I'd if say you're to not the world, in your pants. No, <clears throat> is um, tomorrow's not promised to anyone. Go and eat that fucking hamburger. <laughs> Go and fucking drink that beer. Go and do that. Don't do that line of coke. But Go and do, do have a beer. D- yeah, don't, obviously don't do that. But yeah, tomorrow's not promised to anyone. Go and do that thing, or go and eat that thing, or shag that or thing, shag as long that as they've thing, consented, or talk to that thing that you've been scared to talk to. And it's, yeah, tomorrow's not promised to anyone. And if you want a thumb in your bum and you, and you have a nice partner, get some balls and ask her. Yes, she might just stick it up. Thanks for listening. If you like this episode, please remember to subscribe, turn the bell notifications on, like the episode, and comment below. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's Yes King Oliver. Take a look at the other videos to your side. And if you just want to listen to this podcast, you can do so on Apple and Spotify and most other platforms by going to talkwitholiver.com.